Hi there. In this tutorial, we'll be teaching about how to compute the expected return at variance and standard deviation uh, for stocks in Excel. And we will teach you how to compute covariance between stock pairs as well. If you go to the video description, you can find a link to download this Excel template so you can check your calculations as well. So without further ado, let's get started with the first step. So the first step is really enter the data that we need to make these computations. And typically we'll be thinking about different states of the economy and probabilities associated with each state and the returns of those stocks under each state of the economy. So let's assume in our example, there are five different states of the economy. So let's say the economy can be great with let's say 10% probability, or it could be good with 20% probability, neutral with 40% probability, bad with 20% probability, or terrible with 10% probability, right? Now let's also put the figures for each stock. So let's say in the great state of the economy, Stock A yields 14, 14%, 4% if the economy is good, uh, nothing if it is neutral, it yields a negative return of 1% if the economy is bad, and minus 10% if it is terrible. Okay. Let's move on to stock B. So let's say this stock is a bit more volatile, so let's say it yields 35% return if the economy is great, so which is much higher than stock A, and 14% if the economy is good, 1% if it is neutral, but then, you know, on the downside, if the economy is bad, you lose 11% with stock B, and even worse, you lose 25% if the economy is terrible. So, we began with input in the data, so we've got all we need. Now we can move on to the next step, which is to calculate expected return. And this is going to be super easy. All we need to use is the sum product function of Excel. So I'm going to put in some product here. So essentially, it's going to compute a weighted average, where the weights are the probabilities of each state. And I'm going to actually fix these cells because I'm going to use the same cells for stock B as well, because the probabilities are common across these two stocks. I don't need to change them. But what will differ is, of course, uh, the returns of these stocks under each state of the economy. Now, this is going to be, uh, basically multiply each probability with the respective return and add them up. So let's find out what the expected return for stock A is. It is 1% exactly. And how about for stock B? All you need to do is simply copy the cell here, and we find that it is 2%. Let's double check we've got the right cells. Yes, we've got probabilities for the first uh, input here, and the returns in the second part of the function. So we've already done expected return, and we can move on to variance and standard deviation. We begin with variance because standard deviation is simply the square root of variance. So if you find variance, then actually we are done for standard deviation as well. So what is variance? Variance is simply squared deviations from the mean. And the mean here is the expected return. So basically we need to find the deviations from the mean, square them and multiply with the probabilities. To make our lives easier, so I'm going to first create the deviations from the mean. Okay, so let's begin with stock A. So I'm going to take the first return observation, and from that I will subtract the expected return. Okay, and I'm going to uh, fix uh, the row here because I want to pull this down. And each time I have the deviation from the mean. So for example, this is minus 10, minus 1. So minus 10%, minus 1%, it is minus 11%. Okay. 
or this one is 0%, minus 1%, so minus 1%, and so on. These are my deviations from the mean. So let me actually format this a bit nicer. Let's just, just put the bottom border. And here as well. And again, I can simply extend here and I should get the right figures. Let's double check. So this is going to be 35 minus 2%, right? Yeah, so I've got the right uh, cells selected. So these are the deviations from the mean, okay? Now I need to square them and multiply with the probabilities to get the variance. Again, I can make use of the sum product function, okay? So if, again, I'm gonna begin with the probabilities and we'll fix them because they are gonna be exactly the same uh, for stock B. Now I'm gonna select the deviations from the mean and I'm going to select it again because essentially by selecting it again so it will multiply it and essentially I'll be taking the square of it right so this is exactly what I want so it squares the deviations and multiplies with the probabilities as well and adds all those terms up which is the definition of variance so here we've got the variance for stock A so again, I can simply move it here as well. And this is the variance for stock B. So let's double check again. Everything is correct. Yes, probabilities are selected. And yes, deviations from the mean for stock B is selected twice. So we've got the right figures. How about the standard deviation? So simply use the square root function, okay? put the variance in and voila. So we got the standard deviation or return volatility for stock A, which is 5.66%. Alternatively, you could of course raise this to the power 0.5 as well, which is really the same thing as taking the square root. Doesn't matter, you get the same result, okay? So uh, let's again copy this here as well to find the volatility or standard deviation for stock B. And as you can see, that is 15.65%. So stock B has higher expected return, but it also has higher risk, right? So we can actually observe that here. It does really well, much better than A, when the economy is great or good, but it also does worse than A when the economy is in a bad state. So stock B is a more volatile stock. But you know, we know about risk and return. Higher return comes at higher risk. So this is consistent with that. And the final step here is to compute the covariance between stock A and stock B. So essentially this measure tells us how the returns of the two stocks move with one another. So my guess would be that they will be, uh, they'll have a positive covariance because we can see that, for example, when this is positive and high, this is also positive and high. When this is negative, this is also negative. And uh, let's say the lowest returns also coincide as well. So I expect positive covariance. Actually, once we calculate covariance, we can quickly have a look at the correlation coefficient as well. But let's begin with the covariance. So how am I gonna compute that? The computation will be very similar to the variance computation. But now, rather than taking the square deviations from the mean for one stock, I'm actually going to take here the stock A's deviations from the mean and multiply that with the deviations from the mean for stock B to find the covariance. Okay, it's e as easy as that. So I'm going to again put in the sum product function. Again, I'm going to need the um, probabilities. No need to fix them because we just need one covariance figure, which is the one between A and B, right? The covariance between A and B is identical to the one between B and A. So deviations from the mean for A and deviations from the mean for B. And that is it. So as you can see, the covariance is indeed positive. It means that the returns of the two stocks tend to move in the same direction. So when 
one goes up, the other tends to go up as well. When the other goes, when one goes down, the other tends to go down as well. Let's quickly uh, compute the correlation coefficient here as well, for the sake of uh, completeness. So the correlation is simply a scaled version of covariance, and it is easier to interpret because it's always between minus one and one. So what you need to do is you take the covariance and simply divide by the standard deviations of each stock. So the first one, the second one, and this will give us the correlation figure. As you can see, it's very, very high. So the maximum is one. So here the cor correlation is 0.96. So there's very strong positive correlation between these two stocks. Okay, so this is all I want to cover in this uh, tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Uh, like I said, you can find the download link to the uh, Excel template in the video description. And looking forward to see you in another video. Bye for today.